What's up guys, Gary with self.dev. Today we're gonna to talk about how to install Linux Mint on your hard drive. We're gonna partition your hard drive so we don't override Windows, but if you wanna override Windows, you're more than welcome to. I just wanna have multiple operating systems on my laptop. So first off, what is Linux? Well, it's an operating system like Windows or Mac. Linux is open source, so there's a lot of different flavors and distributions of it. Linux Mint is one of the more user-friendly distributions and it's really easy to install. So it's a good place to start if you're just getting into Linux. There's also Kali Linux, which is for security and penetration testing. There's Arch Linux, which is a super light customizable distribution. When you first install it, all you have is the command line essentially. And there's a lot of different distributions for a lot of different things. Now today we're gonna focus on Linux Mint. Uh, what we're going to do is download Linux Mint. We're going to download a software called Rufus that will allow us to write that to a flash drive, which by the way, you will need a at least an eight gigabyte flash drive for this. We are going to partition our hard drive or not if you just want to install Linux Mint as your default OS and override Windows. I don't, so I'm going to partition my hard drive. And then we are going to boot from the flash drive and we are going to install Linux Mint. So five easy steps. Now, first thing we're gonna do is go to linuxmint.com. I will have all the links you need in the description if you need to get, go check that out. Should bring you up to a page like this. We'll click on download. We're gonna go download links. I'm gonna do cinnamon 64-bit installer. If you have an older computer, check and see if you have 32-bit operating system. Not many people do nowadays, but if you do, use the 32-bit installer. Should bring you to a page like this. I live in the States, so I used a mirror that's in the States to download it. To download it, The download is uh, 1.9 gigabytes, so I downloaded it already just to save some time. Got my little ISO here. But once you click on one of these, it should start the download and just wait for that to finish so you have your Linux Mint ISO. After it's downloaded, that's all we need the Linux Mint page for. So we are going to go to Rufus. Dot IE. Again, I'll have the links in the description if you need them. But Rufus is software that lets us write to the flash drive so we can boot from the flash drive. We'll go down to downloads, we'll click on Rufus, and that should start the download for you here. Uh, you can also use Etcher if you want, that should work. I haven't used it before, but from my understanding, it's just another software like Rufus, so you're welcome to use that if you have that already installed. But once you have Rufus downloaded, just click on the EXE, click on yes. I actually already have it running here, so surprise. Um, I'm gonna close that. And then we're gonna try this one more time. And then we have our software to write to our flash drive with. So that's all we need to download. So make sure your flash drive is plugged in. And in the device section here, you should select your flash drive. This is my 16 gigabyte flash drive. Then we are gonna go to select. We're gonna click on our Linux Mint ISO. And then this should change to the Linux Mint ISO you have. We're gonna go down to start because that's all we need to change. We're gonna click on yes, if that pops up. We're gonna click on write in DD image mode. Click on okay. This is just saying it's gonna erase whatever's on your flash drive. So make sure you don't have anything important on your flash drive. I'm clicking okay. It is clearing what's on my flash drive and now it's writing Linux Mint to my flash drive. <coughs> so this could take a minute or two. So we'll let this run for a sec. All right, so once, it finished, ah, once it's finished, something like this should pop up um, or at least this is what your flash drive should look like. It means it is good to go. So now we are going to partition our hard drive. So we're gonna to go to the Windows search bar thing. If you just type in partition, create and format hard disk partitions should pop up. Hit enter to open that. We're gonna expand that a little bit. And then right here on the Windows section should be your biggest section. Uh, we're gonna shrink that, right click on it. Click on shrink volume, it'll Query how much space is available to shrink. We're gonna go ahead and open up our calculator here because we are gonna do a little bit of math. So let's say you wanted to allocate 50 gigabytes of uh, memory to Linux Mint. Well, every gigabyte has 1,024 megabytes in it. So we do 50 times 
10, 24. So we would need to shrink our partition by 51,200. So that is the number we would put right here. I don't have that much to shrink, uh, but I am doing this on my laptop and I'm gonna give it 100 gigabytes. So I would do 100 times 1024. So I would need to shrink 102,400 megabytes. So that is the number I would type in right here. And then I would click shrink. Like I said, I'm doing it on my laptop. I don't have enough memory on here, so I'm not gonna do this right now. Um, actually, we are gonna go ahead and move to my laptop and then I will show you guys how that works, so. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna do this on my laptop, so apologize for the degradation in quality, but I've got the 102, 400 megabytes I wanna shrink. I'm gonna click shrink and we are gonna let it shrink. Uh, as you can see, I have this is my, my Windows partition, and then I have two other partitions. One's for Kali Linux, it's the 94 gigabyte here, and then this 100 unallocated is going to be for Linux Mint. So now what we're gonna wanna do is get into the advanced options menu. Uh, so you're gonna go ahead and take your flash drive, make sure it's plugged in, And we're gonna go down, we're gonna go ahead and close the partition software, or the partition there. Uh, we're gonna go to the options in the bottom left corner. Click on power. Now on most newer computers, all you have to do is hold down shift and click restart to get into the advanced options menu. Um, and that's gonna let us get to the boot options and we can select a boot from our flash drive. Uh, if you have an older computer, you might have to repeatedly press F12, F11, F2, or F1 to get into the advanced options menu. If none of that works, just Google your computer model and advanced options menu, and it should tell you how to get in there. But if you have a newer computer, all you have to do is hold down shift and then click on restart. Keep holding down shift as it restarts here. Now when it restarts, if you did it right, you should have a blue screen like this pop up. We're just gonna go down to use a device. By the way, if you run into any errors during this installation, check out the video in the top corner here. Uh, it's gonna show you how to disable secure boot mode. That can cause some issues when you're installing other OS on top of Windows. So we're gonna go to use a device. We're gonna go to uh, your flash drive might not say Ubuntu or Kali or Grub or anything like that. Just might have to just play around with these and figure out which one's your flash drive. I'm pretty confident this is mine. So we're going to do Ubuntu. Uh, um, I can't pronounce the word right now. Jeez. And then we're going to let that work its magic. Computer should basically restart with that. And then if you did Linux Mint right, should have this pop up. So we're going to go ahead and do start Linux Mint. Should have your little Linux Mint logo pop up here. And then we have Linux Mint. Now, if you don't want to install it on your hard drive and you just want to boot from a flash drive every time, you can stop here. Uh, this is basically the live version of Linux Mint. But like I said, we're gonna install this on our hard drive. So we're gonna go over here to our Linux, or install Linux Mint, double click on that. You'll have the installer pop up here. We're gonna click on English. I'm in English US, so I'm gonna continue with that. And then we are gonna go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. Where's my Wi-Fi? I'm not gonna show you guys my Wi-Fi, but go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi here. Once you are connected to Wi-Fi, check this checkbox because we're gonna wanna install the third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi and all the other stuff. Click on continue. And we're gonna let that run. After that, it's gonna ask for the installation type. Uh, if you want to install it on Windows and erase everything, you can click erase disk and install Linux Mint and then you will only have Linux Mint as your operating system. Now. 
Now we are gonna go down to something else, press enter. You should have a part that says free space and it should be about the same size as how much we shrunk before. We're gonna press enter for our mount point. We're just gonna do the root, the forward slash. We're gonna click okay. And then it should be turned into a SDA section. So mine is SDA seven. Uh, keep an eye on the memory because it should be the same. That's if you have multiple, that's how you'll know this is the right one. Also the used should be unknown. Uh, and then we're gonna go over to this bar here, go down to SDA seven because that's the section that I partitioned. Click on continue. Click on continue. And then it will ask where we are. And I am in this particular time zone, not Mexico City, but hey, close enough. Oh, Chicago, is Dallas in here? Nope, but we're in this time zone, so we'll go with that. Click on continue, and then we will set up our user. Uh, now this is just gonna be the local user. You're not making an actual account with Linux Mint or anything like that. So go ahead and set up your user info. All right, once you got it filled out, should look similar to this. We're gonna click on continue on the bottom right. Uh, you got your little Linux Mint, welcome to Linux Mint thing. Click on the next. And then it's just gonna tell you a little, about Linux, a little bit about Linux Mint here. So feel free to read through all that. And we're just gonna wait while it installs Linux Mint for us. Now, when it finishes, it should come up with this here. Uh, installation is finished. You can now continue testing Linux Mint, but restart the computer. But until you reset the computer, any changes or you make or documents you save will not be preserved. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and restart now. So, restart now. All right, so if it boots back into Windows, no big deal. We just have to go back to the advanced options menu. So go down to the little power icon here. Click on restart while holding down shift. It'll start to restart for us. And it should bring up the advanced options menu where we're gonna go to use a device, press enter. Go to whatever your flash drive was called before, press enter. And it should bring up the bootloader menu for us. So if you have other operating systems, you can go to that like Kali Linux or Arch Linux or anything like that. We're just gonna go into Linux Mint here. And there we go, we've got Linux Mint installed and it should change, save any changes you make now. Uh, make sure you go through this little welcome menu to learn a few helpful tips and setup stuff. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments in the description below. Uh, I we have, a, we have a Discord if you wanna come hang out in there and talk about Linux, we've got a little section for that now. And I think that's about it, so I will see you next time, peace.